In this demonstration, we will be installing Julia on Windows operating system. To install Julia, fire up your web browser, open your favorite search engine, and type Julia programming language. Choose the link from julialang.org, then click the download button. This will bring you to the downloads page that will provide you with different options depending on your operating system. I have a Windows 64-bit operating system. If you have 32-bit, then choose this installer. But since I have a 64-bit operating system, I'm going to choose this installer instead. Your download begins once you click this installer. After downloading, click the installer, then hit Run. Here, you can change the installation directory, or you may just choose the default installation directory suggested by the installer. This directory is where the installer will dump the libraries and executables necessary for compiling Julia code. If you are satisfied with the installation directory, click Next. Here, I'm going to uncheck the Create Desktop shortcut and create a Start Menu entry because I don't want my desktop and start menu to get cluttered with different icons. But I'm going to check Add Julia to Path so that no matter where we are in the operating system, we can access the binaries or libraries of Julia. This is helpful because we can run the Julia script even if we change our current directory in the console or terminal. Click Next so that the installer begins extracting the executables or binaries for Julia programming. I'm going to click or check Open Julia directory for demonstration purposes only. If I open this bin folder, this will show us the libraries needed for Julia programming. And since we added this location to the operating system's path variable a while ago, we can access these libraries using the console or terminal. Let me close everything. To check if Julia is up and running, fire up your PowerShell by typing PowerShell on your Windows search box, then click PowerShell. Type Julia-V to display the current version of Julia installed in your system. We can also type Julia to enter its interactive REPL feature. REPL means read, execute, print, loop. In this feature, programmers can quickly evaluate few lines of code without the necessity of creating and saving a script file. For example, if I simply want to display hello world, I'll just type print, open parentheses, double quotes, hello world, end quote, close parentheses, and then hit enter. And the terminal will display hello world. If I want to display hello world that is immediately followed by a new line, I'll simply write print ln, open parentheses, double quotes, hello world, end quote, close parentheses. If I want to exit the REPL feature, I'll simply type exit, open parentheses, close parentheses, then hit enter. But of course, we would like to write long lines of code that can do more sophisticated tasks. And in order to do this, we need to save these long lines of codes in a file before executing it. And this is where a text editor comes in, or if you want to test your code at the same time, we will be using an IDE or an integrated development environment. In this demo, we will be using VS Code because it is free. To install VS Code, fire up your favorite web browser, then type Visual Studio Code, then hit Enter. Go to this first link, code.visualstudio.com. If you're using Windows, click this Download for Windows and your installer will download. After downloading, click Open File to run the installer. Click Run. Click I accept the agreement. Then click Next. 
I'll just choose the recommended VS Code installation folder, so I'll just click Next. I'll just choose this default shortcut folder, so I'll just click Next. I will not change the default, so I'll click Next. Then click Install. I don't want to launch VS Code for now, so I will uncheck this, then click Finish. We usually open VS Code by typing Visual Studio Code on the Windows Taskbar search bar and then clicking the VS Code icon. VS Code can be used with many programming languages. To use VS Code for Julia programming, click this extension button. Then type Julia. Choose this extension with the most number of downloads and with a higher rating. Choose this by clicking Install. Once Julia extension is installed in VS Code, let me just open the directory where my Julia executable is located. Note that your installation directory is different from my installation directory, so don't be surprised if this path is different from yours. Let's open this bin folder or binaries folder. Then go back to VS Code and specify the location of the Julia executable needed for compiling the script. Here, click File, Preferences, Settings, then type julia.executable. Enter the location of the Julia executable application here. So cut and paste the bin folder path and then type the complete file name of the executable which is julia.exe. Then save or control S. And we're done. Let's test our setup by clicking file, new text file, click select a language, scroll down then click Julia. Before typing a sample code, let me increase the font size for demonstration purposes only. So click File, Preferences, Settings. Let me just increase the font size to 24. Let's type print, open parentheses, double quotes, hello world, end quote, close parentheses, then control S or save. For now, let's just give this a file name of hello underscore world dot JL. And yes, the extension for Julia code file is dot JL. Then click this run button. Notice that Hello World is displayed on the terminal. Now, let's print two Hello Worlds. But this time, we will add new line after the words Hello World by using println. Click Run. In the terminal, notice that after one Hello World is displayed, the succeeding output is printed on a new line. And after the second Hello World, another new line is inserted. And this is the difference between Julia's print function and print ln function. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching.